Hello everyone. What we have in this video is something much more practical than what we typically do, and it's going to be um, related to theory and composition, whereas almost every single video that I've done is related usually to sound design or some kind of experimental sound mangling technique. This is something that's much more useful and practical. Some of you are probably already aware of how to do it and, and some of you aren't, but uh, hopefully this helps at least a couple people and makes their life a lot easier. That's really what we're doing here. We're trying to do a, a work smart, not hard kind of technique. And uh, this is the scenario I'm gonna pose to you. Imagine that you found a bass loop that you really love and it's in the key of like E flat major. Now you're just working on your computer and you found a sound that you really, really like and you wanna use that sound to play in a melody on top, but you're struggling because first of all, figuring out what are the black keys, what are the white keys on your computer keyboard is kind of hard. And going from like E flat to E flat doesn't really work on the computer keyboard. Like you can kind of play in C and uh, that's about it. And um, I think we've all been in that scenario and we've all struggled and eventually just resort to making a clip and just drawing in the melody, which um, is fine, but I do think that everybody is capable of, and, and actually it usually works out better when you play things in, but most of us don't really know how to play the keyboard. Um, most of us are going to struggle on the computer keyboard. And so we're gonna come up with a solution where at least for major and minor, this will work. The only area it really won't work is if you're trying to like modulate from one key to another, where we're gonna be only using the white keys and we're only gonna be going from C to C um, or on the computer keyboard, you know, you're going from like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, from A to L, okay? And that's probably the more common place where you're gonna use this. So right now we're gonna go into, I'll just show you how we've set this up. This is the way I tend to do it. So we're sending our output of our notes track to the um, piano track here. And then from our piano track, we're getting our input from the notes. Now you could do this all on your instrument track, but I really wouldn't recommend it because things can get really confusing really fast. And when we finish this video, I'll show you how you basically have to disassemble this to make sure that everything is well and good. But um, for now, as long as our notes track is armed, we're gonna have some information happening here on the piano. And let's just now go ahead and just jump right over into the edit view. And what's cool is that I can now, whenever I select piano, okay, we're gonna actually see what's happening when I do and make those edits on the note page. Okay, so right now if I'm on notes, let's just go ahead and see. You can see we're playing a C. Okay, I am just hitting the white notes on my keyboard. The first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna bring in the transposition map. Okay, and this is the uh, cru crucial and critical part of this whole thing, and we're really almost like halfway there. So if we're playing in C major right now, okay, nothing is gonna get altered or adjusted. Now if I switch this and let's say that our key is instead in E major, if I just go here and I switch it to E, when I play a C, I need to now go and look at the piano track. This is the important part. So now we are gonna be looking at the piano track. Now when I'm playing a C, I'm actually seeing an E come out. And if I go back to my notes, we have a C there, but since we're sending to the piano track, we have an E here. And now if I play my C major scale, it's actually gonna play me an E major scale. And now we're really just thinking about it in terms of scale degree. We're not even worried about the notes. And that's what's kind of so cool about this for people that are always kind of playing in C major, A minor. Well, guess what? We're still sticking to um, our white keys. So now we're gonna play our E major scale. This is gonna work for major anywhere you go. So let's go ahead and go to A, and let's look at this. Oops, sorry. And we're now in A major. So if you are in a major scale, um, this just works, you don't need to do anything else. But what happens if we wanna switch it and go to minor? Well, I mean, one thing we could do, just given our, our knowledge that minor is all of the white keys on the keyboard, we could go in here and we could look and say, okay, let's switch this back to C real quick. How can I change? This over, so we go to A, and sorry about that guys, we're in A major again. We can see that our third note 
needs to be transposed down half a step. So now I'm hitting the E key. So now we have, let's see where the next one is that we need to adjust. So there's an F sharp that we need to bring down to an F. And I got lucky, I kind of just almost guess. All right, and then we go up to a G and we have to do the same thing. And now we should be good. So now we've gone from A major to A minor again. I am just playing my C major scale. That's what I'm doing every time. So on my actual keyboard, I'm just hitting all the white notes C to C. So now we should be playing A minor. wanted to go a harmonic minor we would just change that back down okay the issue with this method is that when we go back and we go to like C or we go to um, any other scale degree it's not always gonna work okay so if I go back to C just based on where these notes are I would have to reset this up for C to transpose it to C minor which is one solution, but obviously probably takes a little bit too much time. You could always save the presets, but I'm actually gonna end up playing just a C major scale. Now, if I was to hit a different note, like I'm hitting C sharp right now, it's brought that back down to C just based on how this grid is and how it works. So we don't really wanna have to deal with that. Instead, what we're gonna do when we wanna go minor is we're gonna bring in our diatonic transposer. Okay, so let's go in here and let's bring in our diatonic transposer. And we are going to use the constraint mode because this works fine. And the reason why it's gonna work fine is that if I go into C minor and I play notes here, it plays C minor properly when I play the major scale. So there's no repeats of any notes and that's kind of the critical part to this, okay? If there was a repeat somewhere, this wouldn't work and we'd have to change things up. But now let's say that we go to the key of E, we just make sure that we change E here. Let's go E major, just make sure that it's working. Um, and now let's go into E minor. And you can notice that it's playing a different note every time constraining it to E minor. Let's do one more just so we can see it. Let's go to G sharp, okay? And this will always work as long as you kind of line these guys up here, okay? Now, if I was to hit filter, you can hear that I'm hitting a note, I'm actually hitting the E note, but it's not working, okay? So this is why we go to constrain in this case, and it works fine, and we can play our harmonies as well. But you're gonna be thinking about the keyboard as if you were playing in you know C major in this case, or as if you were playing in like A minor is the way that you can kind of imagine it, but you're always gonna be sticking in that C to C range because C is always going to serve as your fundamental, as your root note. Let's look back at notes again. And there we are with the C. And there we can see that that change has occurred. One of the other really cool things about this is if you're using the micro pitch, Okay, so let's go in here to micro pitch. Okay, if we're using the micro pitch, what's so cool about this is, this is when changing keys really can have a significant impact on the overall sound. Okay, right now in, in equal temperament, um, A440, when we change keys, it really doesn't change the flavor so much. But if we were to go in here, for example, let's go back to uh, C major. And let's pick a preset from in here. Let's say that we grab this one. Okay, so we've grabbed this one here. I don't really know what it sounds like. Let's listen to what it sounds like in C major. And now let's change it over to D major and let's see what it sounds like. So drastically different there, 
okay? And that's where now, if you're using the micro pitch in conjunction with this and you want to experiment with different scales, different keys, but you're not really familiar with how that works on the keyboard or you're just working with your computer keyboard, this is a technique that you absolutely should use. Okay, and it makes your life a lot easier. The other thing we can obviously do as well here is use the uh, multi-note, okay? And if we're in a major key and we just wanna play our triads, okay, so we are in a major key right now, we're gonna go one, four, and seven. If we're in a minor key, we're gonna to wanna to go one, three, seven, but now all of our triads should play correctly. Ooh, that's fun for the fourth. And that's funny because this is actually our fifth and it sounds horrible. And now let's go back to C major and listen to that change. This is a lot of fun. And that seventh actually sounds pretty good. Let's turn the micro pitch off. And now this is the seventh. Now let's go and uh, shift it over here into minor, why not? All right, and now I'm just gonna change this down to the three just to make sure we get that right in the first value. Okay, I'm just making sure it sounds correct. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Oh, it's a nightmare. Let's try it on D, see if it sounds any better. okay? Does not sound okay? Nope. Okay. All right, so you can do something like that or whatever. Now, the other thing you can do, and let's get rid of this micro pitch, I'll leave it up to you guys to experiment, is I'm gonna go ahead and play something in. Let's just like pick a random one here. Let's pick that. I gotta make sure I line it up. Okay, let's get out of here. And we're gonna go ahead and record this in. Now we're gonna record both of them just so I could show you guys like how you would uh, break this down. Let me just see if there's something that I like. Um... All right, whatever, it doesn't matter. This is just for examples. Okay, and we can see the way that it's uh, dropped this out here. So now when we actually have to go in and edit this, you're gonna hear that's gonna sound like a mess because it doesn't know what to actually spit out. So what we'd have to do is go in here onto the notes track, deactivate this track here. Oops, I'm hitting the wrong button. There we go. Okay, so we've deactivated this track completely. Now the piano track should be playing. That sounds correct to me, and this should be the correct notes. And now what we can do is we could go in here and we could transpose some stuff around so we get something a little bit closer together. Let's listen to this. And just like that, you're done, okay? And that was very quick and very simple. Um, and, and hopefully you guys understand what it is I'm going through here. Um, and uh, you can use this for your own music. I think it's, it's a great tool and it's a great resource, especially for those of you that are new to music production and you, you really have no interest in learning how to play the keyboard. You really don't wanna go and, and learn the theory. As long as you can understand the scale degrees, the various chords in C major, and to a lesser extent in like A minor or C minor, you can use this to your advantage. And remember that if you are doing something in minor, you could go in here and then start to move these notes around, okay? If you need to try to get it into um, harmonic minor or what have you. So hopefully that's been of use to you guys. And uh, yeah, catch you in the next video. Take care.